It seems the opposition has some serious concerns about the cuts mooted on Tuesday night. It's going to be a political challenge for Wayne Swan and for Kevin Rudd, and no doubt a political challenge and test for Malcolm Turnbull as well. For a look at the politics of all of this, uh, Laura Tingle, political editor of the Australian Financial Review, joins me now. Laura, thanks for joining us. Um, uh, first of all, on the, the leaks that we've seen this week, today, uh, private health insurance rebate to be means tested. We know that this is something Labor uh, has been agitated about for a while. They opposed it when it was initially introduced and have basically stuck with it for political reasons. Do you think the recession's a good excuse now to take a knife to some of these things? Uh, well, it's a good excuse and it's certainly a good opportunity, David. You, mm. It's very hard to cut things back when things are booming. Uh, when, when there's a recession on, obviously you've got to say we're going to support the economy, but at the same time you can say big deficits we've got to cut back. Uh, we're already seeing references to the intergenerational report coming out, which of course is a Howard government initiative, mm. which highlighted the high, higher cost of uh, the ageing population. And I think the government will try to use the Howard government's uh, structures, if you like, mm. like the intergenerational report to justify the cuts. Because uh, Wayne's ones are already pointing that, isn't he? Saying your, pro your intergenerational report found there's a big problem here, but you did nothing about it. That's right. Uh, which to some extent is true because there weren't many cuts to that area of middle class welfare, as it's called, by the Howard government. Well, there weren't cuts to middle class welfare. There certainly weren't uh, any sort of prescriptive measures made on the health system to address the fact that as people get older, they spend more in the health system and, uh, and on income support. Um, and in fact, what uh, Peter Costello did in the last couple of years was really free up um, the tax treatment of superannuation and mm. made it exceptionally generous. So he's actually going in the opposite direction. Because this is the other area that, that uh, looks set to be uh, reined in uh, as well. Um, wh what do you think? Is this going to be politically tough slugging the rich to this extent? Well, I don't know if it's actually going to end up looking like a slugging the rich budget or not. I mean, you're going to have things like Medicare uh, rebates being uh, wound back. But I have to say the figures that were being floated today are still pretty generous. I mean, you're looking at income levels of $240,000 mm -hmm. before you really start to notice the difference. Um, I think the really interesting thing about this budget is th this coming year there'll be some spending to keep the economy afloat, but I think a lot of it, we've had all this talk about medium term showing us how to get back to budget. Everybody's been assuming they would have some sort of forecasts for the budget which would show that it would come back. I think what they're actually talking about is saying we're looking at medium term changes which will come in over a very slow period of time give people plenty of time to work uh, work their arrangements out on things like the pension, on superannuation, not necessarily tax changes, but making it a bit less uh, uh, generous to put money into super, um, changes to health long term. What about the challenge here for Malcolm Turnbull? We were talking to Helen Coonan, his finance spokesman earlier. Uh, clearly, they're going to make a big point of this, all these broken promises yeah. uh, by Kevin Rudd. But on the question of will they actually vote against these uh, these mm. cuts? Big open question there, because it's, tr it's a tricky one for them. It is tricky. I think there are a couple of interesting things, though. I mean, the indications are that some of these cuts aren't going to come in in 2009-10. Now, what does that mean? It means that essentially we're going to be looking post the budget. Mm. Uh, sorry, post, post the election. The election. Um, and Labor looks like it's going to follow the John Howard GST model of saying, well, no, I didn't I, I, this, is, this would be a broken promise, but I'm going to ask you to uh, go with me on this and at the next election and it. seek a mandate for it. Exactly. Now, that really puts a lot more pressure, I think, on the coalition because that means that the government can go to the next poll really ramping up the economic credibility, economic management mm. credentials. And is Malcolm Turnbull going to say, oh, look, you know, we think you should all keep this money and, uh, you know, and, and mm. not, not suffer any pain? I think... I think the wind's probably behind the government on this, depending on how well they sell it. Yeah, it, it would set that election up as uh, one of defending the working families and slugging the rich or not. Mm. Uh, that, that, yeah, that will be interesting. So when Kevin Rudd and Wayne Swan call this the toughest budget to frame in 75 mm. years, mm. as they've been doing in the last few weeks, is that about right? Well, I think it is. I mean, it's, it's complicated because you've got these two things where you've got to cut and you've got to stimulate the economy. Um, uh, we've, I've, I've just been looking through the figures. Uh, we reported some weeks ago that there's never been an actual official forecast of a recession in a budget, mm. certainly in the post-war period. Um, 
all of these things are very difficult and uh, Wayne Swan was saying to us in the financial review today we still don't exactly know where the bottom is uh, despite right. the good figures recently you know we, it could still be going down for a bit longer yet. We'll be paying a lot of attention of course everyone on the night to the, the level of deficit and the level of debt that, that's officially forecast. Mm. Uh, how worried should we be? I mean when you compare it to other countries sure we're not anywhere near as bad as they are in terms of debt to GDP ratio mm. but it's been a long time since we've been in debt like this. It's a long time since we've been in debt, but the, the questions are always about can you service it? So you have to look at proportions of GDP and you do have to look at the sustainability of the debt. All of those things suggest that if the government can come out and say, yes, we've got a lot of debt, that's what happens in an economic cycle. That's what happens. Mm. But here is our strategy, not, not just forecasts, but here is our strategy for saying, we can n not only get rid of this debt, but we've got a uh, plan for actually getting the budget back into a much better structural shape than it was. I mean, the structural deficit um, was act the, the, the budget was actually in structural deficit, believe it or not, when the Howard government uh, left office. And these are, this is one of those technical terms, a bit like technical recessions, which mm. are hotly contested. But nonetheless, economists will tell you that the budget was actually structurally in deficit, given. The what, what does that mean? What, what does it means mean? is that if. Difficult to explain, but. Give no, it, no, it's, it's it pretty simple. <laughs> Essentially, it says if you take away the commodity boom, yeah. the, the budget would have been in deficit. Even out the cycle. Even out the cycle. And, and of course, we've seen that actually happen. The economy's tanked, revenue is right. tanked, and we're suddenly in deficit. It doesn't look anywhere near as good as it did. So what they're going to say is we're going to try to make it much much stronger underneath so that it's, it's uh, much more sound over the longer term. And uh, does, for Wayne Swan, uh, for Malcolm Turnbull, for Kevin Rudd, who really has the most at stake, do you think? Um, I guess they all do. Well, they, they all do, I think. Um, I think, uh, I've got to say, the government's looking very confident, considering mm. how, how bad things are. They're looking much more confident than they were looking 12 months ago going into their first budget, when things were very uncertain. Um, and I think if, if uh, Wayne, Swan, Wayne Swan and Kevin Rudd can set up this idea of, OK, we will go to the next election, not necessarily a, an early election, but we'll go to the next election mm. seeking a, a mandate for all these very responsible changes. It really does ramp up Labor's economic credibility uh, 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 credentials. And uh, Malcolm Turnbull has already said the next election won't be about climate change, it'll be about the economy. So, but if you have, money if you have a budget littered with broken promises and a massive level of debt mm. and deficit, you would expect the government to take a bit of a hit. It'd be pretty remarkable. Uh, for the government not to take a bit of a hit in sure. those circumstances. Sure, it's a question of whether they can sell this idea. As John Howard very successfully did in 1998, I haven't broken an election commitment yet. I'm going to, but you know, you, yeah, you got I'm a flagged, chance to yeah. vote me out. Yeah. So that 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 gives them a bit of a of an out, I think. Yeah, Laura Tingle, thank you very much for that uh, preview of uh, next week. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, David. This is Sky News. Twitter is enhancing the way we share ideas and information and bringing you up-to-the-minute news and views. Sky News is part of the global conversation. To share your opinion about the stories making headlines and for news as it breaks, go to twitter.com forward slash Sky News AUST.